Shalawam, Thawado, Yahweh Bashna, Rashai, Bahashem, Kakodash, for giving us the understanding of the Holy Bible through their men, that being the apostles of Great Millstone who are worthy of double honors, and Yahweh Bashna, Rashai, Bahashem, Kakodash, Bakatham, to the elect of Israel. Now, I want to say a few words concerning what we're seeing here in the headline. And this is actually a headline from BBC News. Okay. And it's very telling. It's very striking. All right. And, um, you know, it's actually beautiful to see because what we're seeing here is really the fear of um, the elite of Esau, Edom. Okay. Which the Edomites are you so-called white people. All right. And we're pretty much coming to the end of your world, man. And um, as it's written in Habakkuk 2 and verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, the vision concerning World War Three, the end of your world, All right? As it's written, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. You read about that in 2nd Ezra 6 and verse 9. Well, the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, right? And the vision of World War Three, okay, the devastation of this world coming to an end by our nuclear destruction, right? Nuclear missiles, ICBMs, is speaking louder than ever. And this is why we're seeing headlines like this, okay? Nuclear annihilation, just one miscalculation away, UN chief wants, okay? And like I said, this is beautiful. And as a matter of fact, I want to start in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel um, 35 and verse 1. And as you see here in the subheading, it says, Prophesy against Mount Seir. Now, Mount Seir represents Esau, Edom, right? Esau, Edom being the so called white man, the wicked. Malachi 1 verse 4, Job 9 verse 24, Isaiah 26 and verse 10. All right, now Mount Seir is not literally speaking about the actual um, location of Mount Seir or the region of Mount Seir. You know, when it says prophesy against Mount Seir, that doesn't mean that we're to, you know, actually go to that location and prophesy against a mountain. No, it's speaking about us prophesying against the upper echelon, if you will, or the government of these Edomites, all right, of the so-called white man. And that's pretty much what we do week in and week out, of course, beginning with the apostles of Great Millstone on down, you know, by way of us going out there first and foremost on the highways and byways out there on the street corners and by us doing these different lessons, prophesying against Esau, Edom. This is our job to prophesy against Esau, Edom, and this wicked society, this wicked kingdom. Verse 1 says, Moreover, the word of the Lord, whose name in the ancient Hebrew is Yahweh, came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Again, Mount Seir is referring to really the government, right? The top government of Esau, Edom, which that's over here in America, Babylon the Great. Now, if you know your words, you know, if you know your geography, the highest point of a hill or a mountain is always known as a summit, okay? And this is why, you know, you have what is known as a summit meeting, all right? You've heard of the summit or the G7 summit. Well, this is a gathering of, um, you know, these are heads of states, politicians, sometimes prime ministers, um, presidents and whatnot. You know, they come together and they, um, they settle their so-called diplomatic issues amongst themselves, okay? And like I said, politically, that's what's known as a summit meeting. And there's a reason why Esau uses that term summit, because it's a gathering of the heads of the nations, so to speak, all right? And we all should know that, you know, America is basically running things out of all these different countries. So the the highest point of Esau's government, 
on the earth resides over here in North America, in Babylon the Great. Okay, and that's why it pretty much says the same thing here when we go to the book of Isaiah 13. We'll get this real quick and go back. Isaiah 13 and verse 1. The burden of Babylon, again, this Babylon is speaking about Babylon the Great or mystery Babylon the Great, as is written in Revelation 17, which is a code name for America, which the word Babylon goes back to the Hebrew word Babel, which means confusion, which is what you have over here in America, all right, a cesspool of confusion, the confusion of the law, statutes and commandments of our Heavenly Father, not being upheld over here in America, okay? And then you have the confusion of our people, the Israelites, which are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, not knowing who you are, okay? Not having any clue of what the Bible is speaking about, caught up in all these different religions, these different so-called faiths outside of the one true faith, all right? Our uh, people are bugged out, not knowing what's going on. And then you have the confusion of the heathen that dwell here in America and their madness. Anyway, it says, the burden of Babylon which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. All right? Which, again, that's what we're doing. And the banner is referring to this Bible. Okay? Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, the highest government, if you will, which is America. Exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. So let's go back to... um. Ezekiel 35, and let's read from verse 1 again. Moreover, the word of the Lord, whose name in ancient Hebrew is Yahweh, and that's the name, the one true name of the one true God, right? The God of our forefathers. His name is Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their descendants, the Israelites, in whom we are. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face which is a metaphor for this knowledge, right? This wisdom and understanding. Set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee and I will stretch out my hand, meaning the Lord's power, against thee and I will make thee most desolate. Okay? Now we understand according to the prophecies that Really, the only land that's going to be made most desolate, completely and utterly destroyed, wiped off of the global map, if you will, is America, right? Because America is not going to be built back up. Now, there are certain other countries around the world, certain other lands around the world that are going to get hit with nuclear missiles. But America, the land of North America, is going to be completely and utterly desolate, right? Annihilated, if you will. It says, I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, Yahweh. Okay? And in that day, the day of our Lord, that's when the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, and this is who people in their ignorance refer to as God and Jesus Christ. In that day, that's when our Lord is going to be magnified and exalted. Okay, on a whole nother level. I mean, right now, our Lord is being magnified and exalted by way of his servants, the prophets, all right? You know, those of us that are actually coming in the name of Yahweh Bashmael Shai. But when this nuclear devastation hits the earth by way of these nuclear missiles, and when Yahweh Shai visits this world with the multitude of angels and what people out there call UFOs, that's when the name of Yahweh Wah Yahweh Shai is going to be magnified. All right. So um, let's get into it real quick. It says the world is one misstep from devastating nuclear war and in peril not seen since the Cold War. The UN Secretary General has warned. And that's why it says this here when we go to scriptures like um, Revelation chapter 11 and verse 14 which this is a vision that our forefather, um, the Apostle John, saw on the Isle of Patmos over 2,000 years ago. Okay, he saw the vision of the time that we're living in right now. He saw the vision of World War III. Okay, as it's going to say, 
the second woe is past. The second woe is referring to World War II that took place between the years of 1939 to 1945. And behold, the third woe, meaning the third destruction, the third world war, if you will, cometh quickly. All right, and this is going to be the war to end all wars. And this is going to be a war fought like never before. Hence, Isaiah 9 and verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this, meaning this battle, okay, and we read about, you know, the battle of Armageddon in Revelation 16 and verse 15 to verse 16, if I'm not mistaken. But this battle shall be with burning and fuel of fire. All right. And this is pretty much what um, the, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is warning about. All right. Thermal nuclear annihilation. <laughs> this is beautiful. It says... We have been extraordinarily lucky so far, Antonio Guterres said. Amid rising global tensions, humanity is just one misunderstanding, one miscalculation away from nuclear annihilation, he added. And upon reading this, for whatever reason, you know, this made me think about um, Revelation 17 and 16. Let's get that real quick. Concerning how um, you know, these different European countries out there in Europe are ultimately going to shoot their nuclear missiles upon America, all right? Babylon the Great, the Great Whore, as we're going to read here. Pardon me, I'm in uh, Revelation 11. Let's go to Revelation 17. And 16, it says... And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, because pretty much the Apostle John saw Esau's um, conglomerate power, right? He saw Esau's system, if you will, the revived Roman Empire as a beast, okay? And the revived Roman Empire has been um, reborn, if you will, in the form of NATO, the EU, right, the European Union, with America spearheading that hegemony, okay? So the 10 horns are referring to these different European nations, these different European countries, whether it be Great Britain, Germany, France, Italy, okay, Sweden. And let me make mention of how Russia is not a part of, you know, this beast, all right, or Esau's um, revival of the Roman Empire. Russia stands alone. Okay, and Russia is going to play a major role in terms of, you know, destroying America, you know, during this time. It says, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Okay, and, you know, when I read what this guy was saying about how, well, let's just read it here. Amid rising global tensions, humanity is just one misunderstanding one miscalculation away from nuclear annihilation, he added. You know, it made me think of um, Revelation 17 and 16 because, you know, America is going to do something to upset all nations, right? All these different countries around the world, even their own allies, to the point where they're all going to shoot their nuclear missiles upon the whore, right? That's what's meant by these shall hate the whore. The whore is referring to America right? Babylon the Great. And shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. The fire is going to come by way of those nuclear missiles, the ICBMs. Okay. Now, you know, this guy, um, Antonio Guterres, you know, this statement is somewhat ambiguous because not all humanity you know, is going to be annihilated or completely destroyed. Okay. And how do we know that? Well, if we go to um, Ecclesiastes chapter four, 
and go down to the very last verse. It says this, there is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. And that's all we need from this verse, okay, to let us know that even though our Lord is going to bring this nuclear devastation to the world, not everyone is going to be destroyed upon the earth. However, there are going to be certain lands, right, certain regions of the world that are going to be made desolate, such as North America, Babylon the Great. And um, the thing about it is that the only ones that's going to escape this nuclear destruction is the elect of Israel, especially over here in America. That's why it says um, this here, when we go to Zechariah 13 and verse 8. It says, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, and we're reading land here, singular, not in a plural sense. So this is referring to one particular land. We know that land is speaking about the land of North America, Babylon the Great. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So that's speaking about two-third of our people, all right, two-third of these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and the Americans, right, two-third of the Israelites that are dwelling here in America, you're going to get caught up in this nuclear destruction due to your wickedness and due to your disobedience unto your Habash Mel Shah. Oh, and I can't forget, you know, one of the main reasons why our people is going to be destroyed over here in North America is going to be due to them joining themselves unto Esau's system his new world order, right, the Great Reset, by them taking that implantable microchip, which is the mark of the beast. And there's a judgment for that, pursuant to Revelation 14, 9 and 10. All right, and the majority of our people are asleep. They don't know what's going on concerning Bible prophecy. So when Esau does bring forth his new world order and he presents the mark whereby you can't buy or sell, Okay, without having the chip, the majority of our people are going to get down with his system in order to survive. Okay, and this is why the time that we're um, approaching is also known as the hour of temptation, pursuant to Revelation 3 and verse 10. However, the elect of Israel are not going to get down with Esau's system, okay, via that chip. You know, they're going to depend on Yahweh Bashmael Shai. We're going to depend on Yahweh Bashmael Shai, you know, Lord willing, I'm of the elect. We're going to depend on, we're going to depend on our Lord to, um, you know, get us through these perilous times. And the Lord is going to um, protect his elect one way or another. All right. And that's why it's going to go on to say, but the third, that's one third, but the third shall be left therein. And that's speaking about one third of our people over here in America that are going to be delivered from this nuclear destruction, okay? Upon Yahweh Shai's return when he comes back. And who else is Yahweh Shai going to gather or deliver from this nuclear destruction? The rest of the elect, okay, that are gathered or that are going to be gathered upon his return, as it says here in Matthew 24 and verse 31, which our Lord is going to come in the midst of these nuclear missiles being shot and launched. And he's going to grab his elect. It's going to be like a cliffhanger of an event. And as it's written, the righteous shall scarcely um, be saved. Matthew 24, verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. All right. So during this nuclear war, World War Three, you know, our Lord is not going to forget his um, elect, wherever, wherever they may be. Right especially over here in America. And you know, we're hoping like heaven, <laughs> those of us that are in this truth, those of us that are actually prophesying over here in America, we're hoping like heaven that we're delivered, you know, from this um, nuclear devastation. But anyway, you know, that's what I pretty much want to bring out, you know, concerning this article. And you now another thing I want to say is that, look, <laughs> you know, and I'm speaking to you um, Edomites here, you know, your, um, your elite, so to speak, there's nothing you can do to stop, you know, what's um, inevitable, 
okay, concerning Bible prophecy, concerning the end of your world, all right, concerning this nuclear war, World War Three, as it were. There's nothing that you can do. It's written, okay, and not only that, it's been spoken by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bashem Abishai. That's why it says this here. I guess we could close out on um, this last scripture in Isaiah 55 and verse 11. It says, well, let's read from verse 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. And how does the Lord speak? How does the word of the Lord go forth out of his mouth? Well, by way of his servants, the prophets, okay, as it's written real quick here in Hosea 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets and the prophets are here, okay? They've been here going all the way back to our forefather, Abba Bivens, which we believe is Elijah the prophet, pursuant to Malachi 4 and verse 5. Okay, and his understudies, that being King Masha, High Priest Arya, High Priest Yaiqab, High Priest Shah, and their students, Apostle Taha, Apostle Gabar, Apostle Rakar, Apostle Aramlab, and their students, the bishops, the elders, and the men of Great Millstone on down. The prophets are here, okay, prophesying against your kingdom, which is fallen as we speak spiritually but it's going to fall on a physical level real soon, okay? And it's being spoken. It's being spoken into existence. That's what's so powerful about it all. It says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. And that's the point, all right? We've been speaking about, you know, the downfall of your kingdom on the behalf of Yahweh Bashmah Shai, And that's what's going to happen, okay? Your kingdom, your world, is going to come to an end in a brutal fashion by where thermonuclear missiles, ICBMs, nuclear war, World War Three, the third war, Revelation 11 verse 14, okay? Malachi 4 verse 1, Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, okay? And, you know, you upper echelon Edomites, you elite Edomites, you're going to escape this war, Okay? You're going to escape this war only to go into slavery because you're going to be the first fruits of slavery as it's written in Psalms 149 and verse 7. Okay, you can read that for yourself. Anyway, verse 11 again, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And we're living in a time where our Lord is going to accomplish, you know, his dispute, dispute that he has, the beef that he has with you Edomites and the rest of you heathen. And he's going to settle this dispute, you know, this controversy, as it's written in Isaiah 34, the controversy of Zion. He's going to settle it via nuclear devastation. Anyway. Lord willing, you brothers and sisters, the hopeful elect of Israel, were edified. And Lord willing, I get another opportunity to do another lesson. Shalom.